um, we're not doing anything that's going to be excessive anymore when it comes to the animals. Like, there's burrowing and uh, I think, like, two other things that are major for the animals. And then, like, every dinosaur you see after that, in some way, shape, or form, will have shades of another type of dinosaur's play style and functionality, you know? Like this guy. He pounces. There's going to be other dinosaurs that do that. There are going to be other dinosaurs that can grab onto even other dinosaurs and then drag them to the ground and kill them, which is basically what this guy does. It's a different set of animations. You, you obviously want to give them a flair, their own sounds, so they sound different, but generally speaking, that's what they do. Um, but, like, humans, you can just kind of go, all right, well, when we work on humans, insert, like, every survival formula here that does the same thing. It's, it's pretty much set. It, you loot and scoot. You know? You loot and scoot. But... No, dinosaurs, there's no blueprint on getting them right. And of course, they're going to take the longest time. Like, we built them one time, didn't like it. And I mean that in the sense of, like, the, the legacy version of the game. It didn't work out. It very clearly didn't work out. And anyone who wants to tell you that legacy is better in terms of gameplay is just flat delusional. There is no, there is no argument for it because there is no interactivity in the legacy version of the game. And if you wish to die on that hill, well, we will forget you and you will not be mourned. But after the more complicated, you know, like, it's this guy. Yeah. You get climbing done. Okay, cool. Other dinosaurs can climb. This general functionality is finished. Ooh. What do you got for humans that do stuff like this? There's not. And we do not have any blueprints to pull from. I can't just go, hey, what dinosaur game has done this thing and done it well? Because the answer is non-existent. There are very few dinosaur games you can even look at to pull even the slightest bit of inspiration from. Because they just aren't great. Like the dinosaur, the dinosaur category inside of games is grossly underrepresented, grossly lacking content, you know. Reduced growth rate and slower resource drains? Mm, reduced growth rate maybe, but I probably wouldn't do slower resource drains. And then there's all the little things that you have to do with it, right? So if we, uh, let me just get over here. Let me just cheat my way down. That'll work. So these are like the small things, like all the, the millions of little things that go wrong when you add something and it's just, ugh. All right. So he looks up and when your dinosaur looks up, obviously your head turns up. But in the case of this, when you need to look up in order to travel, now our Herrerasaurus looks directly backwards. So you have to fix the small things like that. Like, oh, the stuff that normally works on animals. Like, oh, you've introduced something new. It's going to break a lot of things. You have to have this permanent state alteration of how your dinosaur looks around now. But on the bright side, we get to, we get to do it once and then it's finished. Do it now. You want to know the worst part about humans, though? is that it's really difficult to judge what's going to happen. Because I'm truthfully not sure if... And I say the average. Because don't get me wrong, there is there is very crappy people that are always seeking to play survival games just to ruin the fun of others. It's not exclusive to the aisle. It's just the average human being who wasn't popped in the mouth and told stop being a shitty person. Um... So you're going to get those, but I'm not sure how the average individual is going to handle um, the fact that this is, I think, the only... If, it, if I'm wrong, someone feel free to point out another game that does it, but I don't know of any survival games where you play as humans and something else that might promote humans to globally cooperate in some way, shape, or form. Who knows if humans are just going to murder each other on sight, or they're just going to be like, oh, thank God, another human being. Jesus. I plan for possibilities. 
And the truth is, is that's very possible that things like that will happen. Tarkov survival for humans would have been cool. Like a, a, a drop in, do mission, and then leave. Could you imagine if it was just like, oh, here's the consistent server. You only get to like direct connect and play as dinosaurs. If you want to play as a human, you have to like get into a lobby based system that selects servers that are otherwise whitelisted as eligible for it. And then you drop in and do stuff. It was a thought. It did go through the design team. It was discussed. It was executed. And it was executed with sadness. Because I was sitting there going, man, this would be so fun. But I really don't want to design around this. I just, I want to get on with the sandbox. There's sadly too many extraction games. That has nothing to do with it. Like, I, that has nothing to do with the decision of wanting to, like, try that style. It's a fun style. It doesn't matter if there's a bunch of crappy ones. What matters is, are there a bunch of good ones? Are there, there, are there a bunch of looter shooters that are so good it's spreading the population of people who enjoy that type of game far too thinly? Because the answer is no. No, they're not. Like, the formula of extraction shooters hasn't even been done to the point that it can be appropriately left alone. You constantly have resets in, like, Tarkov, which is the king of looter shooters, or extraction shooters, rather. Like... Don't, don't be silly. That's just preposterous. It would be like saying that there's now too many dinosaur games. Like, is there, is there really? No, there's not. There's not enough dinosaur games. Uh, there's certainly not enough quality dinosaur games either. It just has the issue of like general uniqueness and or being good. Let's see. Is the Carnotaurus a candidate for theropod sparring? Absolutely not. No. Your Lord and Savior, Al your Lord and Savior Albertosaurus, on an official capacity, comes after Allosaurus. That's the only thing I can tell you about Albertosaurus. So Allo comes after who? Uh. I just looked and I am not telling you because I do not need that reaction. <laughs> uh, actually, that's not too incorrect. Uh, in, in the uh, original lineup, Allosaurus and Camarasaurus were going to try and come out together um, around the same time. So, you know. Don't get it twisted, the Maya is not far along in development, it just has assets that are ready, so... It's it closer than the other one. Yes, it's closer than the other one. And even so, he's not set up properly, it doesn't work, like the, the arms and stuff, you see, they're just a little shattered. So, it's not, it's not like that, you know, the Maya is just existing for its uh, assets. Uh, I can tell you that... As it stands currently, there is definitely, other than the Triceratops, another predatory apex in the next update of assets in development. The next DNA list you see will have something that can, that can tussle the Tyrannosaur. That can go around and throw its weight and be like, Hey buddy, what the fuck are you doing over here? So there is that. Let's test out the bumper guards for people that don't know how to manage their stamina as a pteranodon because flying is too difficult for them without pressing forward or shift, not realizing that all you have to do is fly on top of these rocks once and then proceed to go literally wherever you want over 50% of the map. Like, the the ratio of people that are complaining about Pteranodon stamina and then just proceeding to, like, fly as fast as they can directly up is, like, 90 plus percent. And it's absurd. But it's okay. Here, I'll show you. We've got bumper guards soon for the children. Here, we'll just take this off real quick so it doesn't freak out. No, these are... This is Look, this is just like a candle flame. Alright, relax. This is not... This is not great. This is just the test setup. Calm down. Oh yeah, emergency takeoff straight into the sky takes up half your stamina. That's not really a loss. 
That's kind of a, a desired and intentional thing, so... Hmm. Not sure what that was supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, the Pteranodon has incredible range when you actually manage uh, gliding instead of just going... I have to go everywhere as fast as possible. Let me hold my shift key. No, thermals, thermals need an actual uh, a finalized effect. It'll be something that um, I have intended only for pteranodons and other things. There's no need for uh, things like a uh, you know a ground-based animal to see things like this there's no value in it so they never will I have I have no intention of, at least of making thermals something that a bunch of you know a bunch of people that can't see anything or, or gain anything from it see it just just kind of weird well golly we're so high so high up what do we do now Could you tell us more? Yeah. Two phases. Since you said elders and you said mutations, there's two things there. Two things there mean there's going to be two phases, one in each phase. One will be elders, one will be mutations. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I hope this clears up any misconceptions. 